This story is about Regina Kelly and the town of Ern, Texas. The town of Ern, Texas is a small community with about 5,000 residents. African Americans make up 44% of that population. On November 2, 2000, Irma Faye Stewart, then 30 years old and a single mother of two children, was apprehended along with another African American female by the name of Regina Kelly, who was a waitress, then 24 years old at the time, also a single mother with four children. The arrests were part of a big drug sweep based on the word of a confidential informant who would later be proven unreliable. Besides Regina and Irma each spending one night in jail for minor traffic tickets, neither one had, had never done any serious time in prison. The informant had implicated 25 men and two women in felony drug distribution charges. Many lived in a public housing project. All but one was African American. They claimed that they were innocent but were put in jail on a $70,000 bond each which meant they would have to put up 10% of that, which would have been 7,000. Regina and Irma were cellmates. They weren't familiar with the judicial system, so naturally they were afraid of what would happen to them. They put all of their faith into their public defenders. A public defender is a court-appointed attorney. I'm not saying that all court-appointed attorneys are useless, but I'm calling it at face value. A lot of them aren't getting paid much from their clients or very little by the court, so they really don't put much effort into investigating their clients' cases. Then to make matters worse, Eugenia and Irma are African-American and poverty-stricken. When they went to court to meet the attorneys, they both maintained their innocence and asked their lawyers to do their due diligence in the investigations of their cases. But it was alleged that their lawyers gave them little time. When asked by reporters about Irma's case, let her attorney tell it, he had no recollection of her having her as a client, although his name was on her plea agreement. Regina's and Irma's lawyers fall into the attorney of the useless, fall into the useless attorneys that I previously spoke of. Unfortunately for them, both of the lawyers had encouraged them to plead guilty. Now, for my opinion, I believe that both of these lawyers were probably on the DA's team. They probably stereotype Regina and Irma as most uppity white folks do towards low income, minimum wage working black folks. I mean, any attorney that was genuinely interested in their client's freedom and innocence would have fought tooth and nail to get their char charges dropped. Okay, so they urged them to plead guilty and take probation to get out of jail. Regina was told that if she didn't plead guilty, and instead go to trial, she would play, be faced up to five to 99 years in prison. That's an utterly ridiculous sentence. How the fuck can someone who doesn't have anything remotely serious on their criminal record get an insane jail sentence like 99 years? That's basically natural life. Three weeks after Regina Kelly's arrest, her parents managed to get her bond reduced from 70,000 to 10,000, which is equivalent to $1,000. She went home to await trial. However, Ms. Irma Stewart was, wasn't as lucky. She had to remain in jail. A week later, without any support to take care of her two small children and unable to withstand the mental strain of being locked up, Irma felt she had no choice but to plead guilty to delivery of a controlled substance of more than four grams in a narcotic-free zone. She was sentenced to 10 years probation and was required to pay an $1,800 fine and report to probation once a month. An hour later, Irma was released. Out of the Urn, Texas narcotic suite, Irma and seven others were eight out of the 27 who pleaded guilty. Those who refused to plead guilty and couldn't make bail sat in jail for five months awaiting trial. The first trial took place on February 19, 2001. It has soon become clear that the evidence was worthless and that confidential informant had fabricated the entire sweep to the prosecution. Within weeks, all the cases except those who had copped out to a plea deal were dismissed. Regina stated that she wants a formal apology from the DA, John Paschal, so that she could clear her name in her small community. The Robinson County DA, John Paschal, told news reporters that he believes all those who were apprehended were guilty, but also said that he believed the state had enough evidence to convict them beyond a reasonable doubt. No apology can help Ms. Irma, Faye Stewart. 
three years after she pleaded guilty in order to go home and care for her kids and was that she was destitute due to the plea deal she wasn't eligible for food stamps or any federal grant money for an education she was banned from voting for 12 years she was evicted from her apartment for non-payment of rent her children had to sleep in various homes that was willing to take them in irma slept outside the housing projects waiting for the mornings to come so she could go to work as a cook a job that paid five dollars and 25 cents an hour during that time she owed a fine that was nearly two thousand dollars court costs and probation fees which she was pressured to pay irma devastatingly said that as long as she had a job that she could pay it i swear the judicial system can be so cold-hearted some judicial systems are worse than others depending on the jurisdiction and state they knew this woman not only was working a minimum wage job but she couldn't even afford a roof over her and her children's heads Unfortunately, none of that mattered. She had repeatedly told them that she was having a hard time paying for her son's asthma medication, which he um, desperately need, needed and couldn't go without. Irma said that they didn't care about any of that. It was all about the money. Regina didn't believe that Irma really understood the significance of everything that would happen after her pleading guilty. She's a single mother. I'm a single mother. There's no way we can survive without the help from the government. We need that help. She, pertaining to Aim Irma, wouldn't be able to get any of that if she were to plead guilty. Speaking in hindsight, the snitch that fabricated the alleged charges against Miss Regina and the other 26 defendants was paid and also suffered from a mental illness. The DA was actually in on the setup suite. The informant was coerced into giving up 20 or more individuals to help him beat a case that he allegedly had against him. The DA office had received a huge federal grant generating as many arrests as possible. The informant had pointed a finger at 28 people who mostly resided in Regina's housing projects. The informant supposedly used water and baking soda to make bogus white powder. Y'all know where I'm going with this. Anyway, he made that to assist with the fabricated story he told. One defendant mentioned in the case who was accused of selling narcotics was actually in the hospital during that time. Regina told her conference attendees that thank God she has a feisty vocal mother that wasn't willing to back down and just sit back and let her daughter take the bogus charges that she were that was given to her. Regina also mentioned Irma Faye Stewart, who was less fortunate than she was. During her conference meeting, Regina refused to take the bull crap and bow down to a plea deal. Ultimately, the snitch's lies were exposed. The DA had no choice but to, dis to dismiss all the other cases, including Regina's. However, those who had taken the plea deals didn't, begin, didn't gain the dismissals that the truth be that the truth demanded. The way our criminal justice system works, their pleas were considered to be binding, despite the fact that the snitch got understand and confessed that he had fabricated the entire ordeal. Regina remained committed to seeking justice. She sued the DA in civil court. Her civil suit ultimately exposed a violent racism and callous opportunism that motivated the district attorney and forced a favorable settlement. I don't know if y'all ever heard, if y'all ever watched the fact-based movie, American Violet, based on the Regina Kelly story. In the movie, they show an actual recorded clip of D.A. Paschal's daughter during an interview speaking about her father's racist behavior. Paschal couldn't hold his composure any longer during the viewing of the tape and confronted an African-American attorney who was conducting the questioning. Paschal shouted, so what? Everyone in this town is racist. Eventually, the lawsuit was settled out of court. He didn't want that tape to be played in a courtroom. The 150 plaintiffs were vindicated. The court appointed attorneys at the conference were faced to, forced to contemplate their roles in the justice system, where if someone like Regina Kelly can rightfully end up feeling the, that even her advocates were against her. Her court appointed attorney tried to course her into pleading guilty from the beginning without any investigating into her case. She had no representation in probate court neither. That Mr. Pasha was something else. Putting Regina in jail on bogus charges wasn't enough. He also attempted to have her kids taken from her. If it weren't for her extra extraordinary fortitude, she would have been like millions of people in this country who are forced to take the deal rather than put up a fight. Regina's story prompted highlights that, in fact, in a plea-based 
criminal justice system facts matter less than situations. Her public defender was overworked and underpaid, as I stated before. The DA had unchecked power in a federal mandate to make arrests, whether legal or illegal. Unfortunately for the town of Urn, the cor corrupted district attorney was re-elected by the voters of Robertson County. Regina said that he hasn't changed a bit. Due to law enforcement harassment, she was forced to move to Houston, Texas, only able to visit her loved ones in Urn in this in discretion. Regina Kelly now travels the country, reiterating her story in conference meetings and seminars. Unfortunately, this happens more times than we think in America. There are approximately 4 to 6 percent of prisoners, prisoners who are wrongfully convicted and are fighting to be released. The ACLU, also known as the American Civil Liberties Union, are the ones who filed the lawsuit on behalf of Regina Kelly and Irma Stewart and all other others that were indicted in the false narcotic related charges. Grant Boyd, director of the ACLU's Drug P Policy Litigation Project and the lead attorney on the case. This case is relatively resembling the notorious 1999 illegal narcotic bust scandal in nearby Tallulah, Texas, where it was reported that 45 people, the majority African-American, were apprehended and indicted on bogus narcotic charges. According to the ACLU's complaint, based on the false accusations of uncorroborated tales of informants throughout the years, task force members in raid the African-American community in Urn, Texas, to arrest the residents who were identified by the confidential snitches, resulting in arrest and harassments of the innocent. Of the ACLU clients named in the complaint, one man who was arrested at the funeral of his 18-month-old daughter and held for a month before the charges were dropped. Others were able through to prove through their job time cards that they were at work during the time they were accused of participating in the, nar the narcotic transactions. Cases like Earn and the Tulua case begin to explain the troubling fact that America has more black men in prison than college, Boyd said. The ACLU is calling for an end to the racial profiling in Texas and throughout the nation. The lawsuit was filed against the South Central Texas Regional Narcotics Task Force and all its agents, including the city of Earn and the county of Robertson. DA Pasho was also another defendant named in the lawsuit. These race-based narcotic sweeps and unwarranted detentions of innocent citizens violated the Constitution protections against discrimination on the mere basis of one skin color, unreasonable searches and seizures, and the deprivation of liberty throughout the due process of law, the ACLU complaint charged. Will Harrell, the executive director of the ACLU of Texas said that the T Tulua and Earn cases were not in operation to receive federal funding. He said task forces must have a good arrest number and targeting minorities is an easy way for the task force to pad their statistics. The Justice Department should take a more serious look at how taxpayers' money is being used in Texas. The ACLU of, of Texas has asked the Justice Department to freeze all federal funding for Texas Regional Drug Task Forces because of racially unjust practices by law enforcement in Tulua, Earn, and elsewhere in the state. Harrell stated, to date, no action has been made. All of the ACLU's Earn clients spent in a considerable amount of time in jail before the charges against them were dropped in, June, in February 2001 because insufficient evidence and the questionable credibility of the informant. Regina has been branded as a narcotic dealer throughout the small town of Earn. She couldn't obtain a good job or enroll in college because everyone knows who she is. Her reputation was tarnished by the laws, by the law, the lies and corruption in the legal system. The ACLU was seeking a court order preventing the task force and law, local law enforcement from conducting illegal narcotic sweeps targeting African American residents in Earn and the unlawful arrests detention and prosecution of residents based solely on their race. 
ACLU attorneys are also seeking damages on behalf of the clients for emotional distress, loss of earning capacity, and permanent damage to their reputations. Well, unfortunately, this happens all the time in America. We all know how the police are, especially towards African Americans. It's not right, but that's just the way it is. I hope one day that it'll change and everybody will be treated equal and not based on their race or skin color.